Dr. RP, will you just tell me what I need to do to have healthy teeth and joints? That's like essentially what people want. They don't want TMD and they want to have healthy teeth, healthy mouth, healthy bite. Before we get to that, I want to tell you about a few situations, teeth gone wrong, that will help you have healthy teeth and joints. Before we jump right into that, hit that subscribe button. Please do me a favor, like this video. We're trying to get the message out to the world. Healthy teeth, healthy joints. What do we need to do? What are the answers? In 2021, the US spent out of pocket $63 billion for dental services. And you anti-dentites out there might be like, see, this is why I don't like the dentists. They're so expensive. But is there a way that you could reduce your costs? First bad tooth situation. This could help you maybe save some money. It's called decay. This is what dentists, generally speaking, call cavities. We're referring to some sort of decay in your tooth. It turns out that teeth don't really do well with acid. Unfortunately, I'm sure there are people out there who have actually tried and put acid in their mouth, whether it's some joke or they're trying some DIY hack. Please don't do that. Bad for your teeth, bad for your general health. Second, there are different foods and drinks out there that are more acidic in nature. For example, Coca-Cola. If you read the ingredients, check out our video, has a percentage of its content that is actually phosphoric acid. It's the same kind of acid that we use to clean off a little layer of tooth enamel so that we can glue stuff to the tooth, whether it's fillings, brackets, so forth, right? A little bit of it doesn't do harm to the teeth, but if you leave it there, or if you're drinking that stuff, and you're drinking a lot of it, that could easily dissolve your teeth and affect your insides. Finally, mouth is full of bacteria, especially in America, we eat lots of junk, sweets, processed foods, simple sugars. As you change the oral environment with lots of bad food and drinks, certain bacteria come in, process that food, and you know what they do? They eat it up and they poop it out right on your tooth as an acidic byproduct. Who would want poop in their mouth? Nobody. If your teeth are continuously exposed to an acidic environment, you have an increased chance for decay. Not just holes on the top of your teeth, but you can get those cavities, the decay that happens in between the teeth. This is the second situation go wrong. I have a patient that walks into the office. We get to see their x-ray, their pano, and I'm checking out all their teeth. They're kind of young, but they've got some of their permanent teeth, some of their baby teeth still, so they're in the mixed dentition, and boom, there it is, a baby molar. This one was in a special spot. This baby molar was what we called ankylosed. Tooth ankylosis is where it could be permanent tooth or baby tooth was stuck in the bone. As the teeth come together, grow in through the bones so that we can eat, some of the teeth get stuck in the bone and the rest of the teeth continue to grow up and they stay stuck. And this is a particular problem when you have a permanent tooth that's actually underneath the baby tooth that's now stuck because the permanent tooth can't get in. One, it's bad if the permanent tooth can't come into the right position, but two, it's also bad if it can't come in the right time. We tend to use the word submerged when we're talking about these types of teeth because what ends up happening is the rest of the teeth around it grow up and the baby tooth looks like it's sinking down. It submerges down below the level of the teeth. Now, these teeth next to it are starting to tip in over, closing up the space. You're gonna have to tip those teeth back up, pull the baby tooth out, and then fish that tooth in. Check out our other videos, the impacted canine. So those are two situations, teeth gone wrong, not things that you want. You wanna save money, do the things that are necessary, and try to avoid situations that are unnecessary. What do you need to do to have healthy teeth and joints? First thing you can do is try to reduce your risk for decay. How do you do that? Brush your teeth, eat and drink less junk food. That's it, that's the simple answer. Some people are genetically predisposed, but you can't really do anything about that. So focus on what you can control. Does that mean you can't eat sweets every once in a while? No. We all have things that we just really like the taste of, but we gotta take care of our teeth and we gotta make sure that we're doing it in reasonable amounts such that we're not getting cavities all the time. Parents, you might have to stop up a little bit. If you wanna reduce the risk of your kids having cavities, you probably need to check their teeth. Even your teenagers, if you wanna save some money, you might still have to treat them like a child. Here's a pro tip for you. Just because your dentist says you have a cavity, don't just say, okay, where is it? How big is it? Is there a process that we can consider to try and prevent it from getting worse 
What happens if we don't do anything right now? Ask questions like this and maybe consider getting a second penny if you need. The second thing for healthy teeth and joints, know that it's possible to get an ankylosed tooth. One of the goals of orthodontics is try and get all of your permanent teeth into the right position in a reasonable time or at a reasonable time. Check in with your dentist. Keep an eye out for those baby teeth that are dropping low. Make sure your baby teeth are coming out. Go see the orthodontist at around age seven and monitor for those teeth. In my opinion, an ankylosed baby tooth with a permanent tooth underneath it is a very reasonable consideration for some sort of phase one orthodontics. Get it out of the way, make some space, try and give it space so that it can come in with the time that you have while you're growing. Finally, a healthy joint. This is a harder one to ensure and or predict because it's affected by multiple different factors. The bite and the way that your teeth fit together being just one and not even the primary or key contributor to TMJ health. I'm not saying that it doesn't contribute or that it can't help. The key here, in my opinion, or the advice that I'm gonna give is stress less. Women tend to be predisposed more likely to get TMJ or have TMJ problems. TMJ symptoms can come and go. You might not have it when you're young and then get it as you get older. As we age, sometimes we have degenerative joint conditions. It just happens as we get older. Or sometimes you have it when you're young and then it goes away. It can be muscle related. You got giant chewing muscles here. If you're a squeezer or a grinder, and it's because of stress, you might wake up and feel some serious symptoms, painful symptoms. So I had a patient that came, my main, her chief concern was her TMD problem. She was having a disorder of or related to her joint. That's what she felt like. After some questioning, we decided that her symptoms seemed more associated with a muscular type of disorder. The pain was associated with the muscles, not necessarily during opening and closing in the actual joint itself, like with the disc or the bone. The muscles associated with opening and closing and the joint. So you ask questions like, what's your job? Turns out she's a lawyer. Is it stressful? She says, yes it is. And there's nothing I'm gonna do about that. I was like, well, there's probably nothing that I can do for you that will get rid of this. And I could try to improve your bite, but if you continue in this job where you are high levels of stress, you're gonna be thousands of dollars in the hole and still have TMD related symptoms. If you want your teeth to look better and maybe the TMD gets better as a secondary effect, but if your main goal is to fix your TMD and you're not willing to figure out how to stress less, fixing your bite and strain your teeth is not the right solution for you. Probably not. And here's another tip. Plenty of people with bad bites who have no TMJ related problems. And there are people that with really good bites based on the orthodontic ideal that have TMJ related problems. Don't let anybody tell you that they have a cure for your TMD. Could they have something that helps? Yes, but like I said, there's lots of things that can contribute to it. There you have it. Two situations where the teeth have gone wrong. We spent a little time talking about the joints. Three simple secrets to healthy teeth and joints. Brush your teeth, avoid eating and drinking all that junk food. Don't get caught with an ankylosed tooth. Go see your orthodontist. And third, stress less. I hope these situations were enlightening for you and that you consider these three simple solutions to healthy teeth and joints. If you want to talk shop, come find us in McKinney and Anna, Texas. Maybe we can be helpful for you. At least we can give you some good information. Or if you know somebody that needs an orthodontist who's considering treatment for themselves or their child, share this video with them. That's all I've got. Just a little PFO so you know where you're going. Packard out.